What up, what up, everybody? What up, what up, man? Rich Neil, Rich McNeil last week. That was phenomenal. I hope you enjoyed him and inspired to build something and create something. It's create everything. I'm so glad to be with you tonight. Thank you for locking in and logging in with me this evening. I hope you got your book. If not, you can order it on Amazon. How many of you got your book? Holler at me. Let me know. I know we got some printing issues and some printing concerns. We're working it out with Amazon during the pandemic. We couldn't control our printing and we wanted to get it out there. The words on the paper are still what they are, even though the design is a little bit off. They try to mess up my design. We're fussing at them right now to get it aligned and they're working with us to get it better. So please bear with us. Like I told you, it doesn't always have to be perfect. It doesn't always come out perfect when you can't control the outcomes, but you can still be perfect purposeful and make sure that you get it and get it done. What chapter are you on in the book? How far are you in the book? I see you. I got my book. I got my book. I got my book. Is it good? I mean, don't, don't just, don't, don't, you know, don't just say it cause I want to hear it, but uh, I hope that it's inspiring you and causing you to think and rethink about creating everything. Thank you for getting your book, eBooks, hard copies, let somebody know, buying a copy for somebody. I appreciate it. Tonight is going to be great. Did you enjoy Rich last week? The painting, man, right here live in full effect in front of our face, he painted a praying woman. That was so dope and so inspiring. I appreciate him. I hope that you check them out and that it inspired you to, to do something and get something done. Hey, my question from the beginning, as we talk about tonight, starting and restarting and recreating, and sometimes the hardest part of creating is just getting started or fighting to get started because of failures of your past. So what's something that you, you failed at or something you created that it did not come out the way you expected? Holler at me, all right? What is something that you failed at? Let's get in the frame of mind. Let's get on the same wavelength, all right? So what's something that you failed at? Something you attempted to do, you failed at, it did not come out the way that it that you expected. Like, you know, it didn't come out to the way that you expected. Talk to me, all right? Let me know something I failed at that didn't come out. That's real. My marriage, that's real. So sorry to hear that. I get that. I have done that before, right? What's something life, real life stuff that happened? Getting my degree three times. That's right. Something I launching my digital marketing agency. That's right. Something you failed at didn't come out at the way that you wanted to it to come out, right? The 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 the, the resilience that it builds, the perspective that it builds when things don't turn out the way that we hoped or the way that we wish. Thank you for sharing being honest and being transparent. Anybody that you see that's successful, believe me, have failed more times than you can imagine. A business, that's right, but you don't give up. You don't, cre you don't quit. You don't throw in the towel. There is no one, no one that has succeeded at anything that has not failed. Somebody says starting college and never finishing event planning business, my jewelry business, right? Sometimes we start and we fail. Sometimes we start and we fail. The thing is that you can feel the energy. You can feel the tension, the hesitation even of you writing it and typing it because it's a reminder. Uh, it brings an emotion. It brings a sadness to it. And sometimes that reminder, that emotion is a hindrance of us moving forward, attempting to do it again, or even to try it again, right? To try again. Well, I want to just tell you something because there's no successful person, no successful person that has ever accomplished anything without failure and learning how to recuperate or recover or to bounce back. And our guest tonight is no difference. He is going to take us through part of a journey and give you some wisdom and some insight because we can allow your past, your hindrance to stop you from moving forward in excellence. Before we introduce him, I just want to tell you failure is not final. Everybody type that. Failure is not final. Come on, type it. Failure is not final. Let's clear the air. I needed you to talk about it to bring it up, but now we're going to clear the air. Failure is not 
final. Come on, type it emphatically. Failure is not final. When you think about failure, uh, failure is not an event, but an opinion. Mm, I feel it today. Failure is not an opinion. It's not an event. It's an opinion. It's an opinion. It's a matter of perspective, right? It's not an event. It's not this marker. It's not this date. It's not this constant reminder that you have to have over and over again. It is an opinion. It's not an event. It's not something you have to always point to, right? It can be something you put under your belt and that you learn from because failure is not final. Failure is not an event, but an opinion, but merely an opinion. When you consider this, when you think about successful people, success is moving from one failure to the next failure without losing any enthusiasm. Oh man, I hope I hope y'all ready tonight. We're going to get it in and we just getting started. Failure is moving from one failure to the next failure without losing any enthusiasm. Almost like you're playing, like you're exploring, like you're you're trying it and saying, "Hey, what if what if this works and what if that works and if it doesn't work and if it does work, right? And and people get stuck in one thing. They make failure an event. And when they make it an event, they never lock into the possibilities. Man, our guest tonight would be have failed at something that most people would think would have stopped him. But right after the failure, he explored a greater and a bigger possibility that never would have came out of the moment had he not had he not worked through the moment of failure you can't let failure become an event but it has to just be an opinion and you have to learn how to go from one failure to the next failure and not lose your enthusiasm not lose your enthusiasm well you say oh that sounds fancy right but how do you do that i can tell you how you do it you stop looking at what could have been and you start looking at what could be man y'all hear what i said you stop looking you stop fantasizing you stop um you stop romanticizing what could have been and you begin to embrace what could be your shall be your could be your what ifs right stop romanticizing the history stop romanticizing the past because you can never 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 move into the next thing if you continue to romanticize where you've been and so you do that by disconnecting from the experience and use it as a place of empowerment i'm done and then I got to bring our guests on. You disconnect from the experience and you use it as a place of empowerment. You use it as a platform. You use it as a building block. You use it as, as something that a, a, a teachable moment, something that you learn, right? So you stop looking at where you've been and you start looking at what could be and what the possibilities are. Stop romanticizing your history so that you can create and shape. And if you don't recover properly from what is an assumed failure, if you make failure an event and you don't recover properly, you'll remain stagnant. You'll remain stale in the place of something that was only supposed to teach you a lesson. Where well, tonight I grabbed an entrepreneur, a very a 25 year vet in starting up and an entrepreneur. He's an incredible guy. I know him on many, many and multiple levels, have the privilege to be a part of his life. He'll talk to you about that. But more than me being a part of his life, I I've had the privilege of him being a part of my life. And he's one of those guys that when he comes into your life, he comes to add value and he helps. And it just so happens today is his birthday. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to hold you up. I hope today that you get excited to introduce the incomparable, the entrepreneur, the radio personality, the author, and the interior designer. His name is a Jeremiah White, and he's here with us today. What's up, Jeremiah White? How you doing, man? Man, I am so excited. I'm really excited because I turned 50 today, but I'm more excited that I get to share with you on Create today. Can everybody tell Jeremiah happy birthday? He is 50 years old today. 50. He's at the halfway point. I, that's man. what I call it for him. I say, man, you'll live to 100, man. Come on. He's at the halfway man. point. 50 years under his belt. Yeah. And the next 50 is coming. Come on. Can you, somebody <laughs> tell Jeremiah happy birthday? Today yeah. is the 50th birthday. Yes. I wanted to have him on, not just 
because it's his 50th birthday, but because he is an accomplished entrepreneur. He is an author, a radio personality, and he is also an interior designer, as well as a husband, a father, a mentor, and affectionately known to so many people as Uncle Jerry. That's what they call him, y'all. Wow. Uncle Jerry. Today is his birthday. His name is Jeremiah White Jr. You can follow him at Experience Jerry. But yo, man, Jeremiah, happy birthday today, man. Why don't you begin? Come on, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I don't want to give it all away. So, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. You said a lot. You said a lot. And it's, it's interesting to hear somebody talk about you. And that's the other thing I want to say to people is in your next place that you believe in God to, to send you to, you got to be able to have people talk about you. And so that means you have to be creating a story. And as Pastor was talking about, you have to cr- be continually creating stories so you're not living in your past. That's so right. I'm 25 years entrepreneur. Um I've been married for 24 years. I have two wonderful daughters and they're 22 and 20. Um, I have um, just watched myself grow and in, 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 in learn and be more productive and, and take wisdom from people and, and grow in failure. But then, like I said, grow in failure and not be afraid to kind of fail forward. So I'm enjoying this life that God has put me in. Um, it's It can be a miracle round sometimes, but I always say just stay on, enjoy the ride and keep moving towards what it is, the higher goal of what it is you're thinking you want to do. That's right. So Jerry, Jeremiah is a entrepreneur of what is called Reflection Salon and Suites here in Grand Rapids. Uh, this, this business, this organization has had an evolution. Not only have I been privileged to pastor him and mentor and coach him, he's also been a part of my leadership team and helping me develop the culture at the revolution. Uh, but revolution, I mean, Reflection Salon and Suites, man, tell us about Reflections Salon and Suites. Give us the lowdown on what's going on there. What's, so what's going on there? is it, it really came from reflection salon and suites came from a failed um what would seem to be a failed venture hmm. um i started off um 20 i was four years in working for somebody and i said i felt the the urge to do something different right and i opened up my own salon absolutely right. great about um 15 chairs 14 chairs in it going well i felt the 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 push a couple years later to do it again and then um we opened up uh what would be suites um, now, which would have had about six suites and another six stations. And then we did it again and we opened up another salon and there was about eight seats in there. Um, and so like that, you had three salons. So I had three salons. In one city. Three, one city, three different locations. And and I, I thought I was I thought I was there. You know, that was my goal and I was ready to rest on it. And I had some real estate properties and stuff like that. So I was I felt like I was doing my thing, you know, <laughs> I was in my thirties. I was married. I was driving what I wanted to drive. I was living where I want to live. I had some money in the bank, good credit, you know, lines of credit and and I was winning awards for all the stuff that I was doing. And you couldn't tell me nothing really, you know, because I was grounded and I was doing what I believe God called me to do. Um, and then, you know, kind of the the carpet got swept up from, from under. Yeah, you talk about it in the past tense. You know, you say I was, I was, I was, I was. Right. I mean, you you got three salon suites, you know, yeah. families intact, daughters, yeah. children, real yeah. estate, property, businesses. Right. What happened, man? I mean, it's right. like you one city, three locations, 20 yeah. years. I mean, it's the real deal. You in your 30s, it's popping off. Popping. What happened? What it happened? Was. So we rolled that wave for about mm, 12 years or so, um, creating and thinking we're doing what it is, what we were supposed to do with well, the mar- mortgage crisis hit. Wow. Um, and so you always have to be ready. I think where we get caught up in is we get on a, a cruise control thing yeah. and we're not ready or we're not trying to see what's happening before it before it happens. Yeah. Or we don't know what to do as we see it happening before it's happening. Because I do think I'm a seer, so I kind of saw some things happening, but I really didn't know what to do. Fast forward, long story short, I got rid of all of them. Some I lost, some I was able to sell, wow. and I had to start again. Wow. And um, this is where the team goes. This is where you need a team approach because I was I was I was counseling with Pastor over this whole start again. We were going back and forth, and you know he always preaches create. You can do it. Let's drive. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so <laughs> he had me energized and he had me ready, and he had me believing that I could do it. But I but I was really bound by fear. Uh, it really was. And and I was bound by the 
kind of the depression of everybody knowing what's happening publicly. Wow. Like it's okay to be a public um, success, but when you kind of are a public failure, you don't want to try again. Wow. And so um, that was wow. probably the hardest part for me. And so he built my courage back up. Wow. Through sitting under, it's, it's really important to sit under the right leadership, but to also, you got to be eating the right stuff. Um, your, your, your diet, what you eat, who you spend time with, the people that you let give you information in your ears about not failure, but how to repeat what you're doing wow. or how to recreate what it was. And so we talked about it over and over again. And I started again small. And before I knew it, I just, I launched into the deep because really I don't live in fear. I live in right. faith. So, so you're in the middle of this and, and I love what you said. That's honest. It's like you out here, everybody watching, they seeing you ride the wave of success. And so part of the part, part of the failure was that you did not get to fail privately. Like oh. you're out here, like last week we had the painter there, Richard, he's painting like in front of everybody. Right. And, and, and you're out here living and creating and opening up businesses right. and doing it, following your dream in front of everybody. And right. then when it collapsed that it also collapsed in front of everybody. Everybody. And so now you got to deal with the pressure of not so much what's happening in your head, but the opinions of other people. Listen, guys, you can't afford to let other people's opinions stop you from right. moving in the thing that you know you're supposed to do because the people will celebrate you in public and then they'll talk about you in private. But listen, anytime God lets you or allows you to go through something in public for people, you right. have to watch how you handle that and manage that even the more because your comeback is going to be even greater. You can't fail. You can't quit just because people watching let them right. watch right because the people that talk about you and criticize you are also the people that are copying you learning from you and also will be the people that come back to celebrate you so man listen all of that happened so right. what happened like how did you recover the stock market i mean the the, the the housing market crashed the whole thing dipped you lose you lose one of the shops you sell one of the shops you funk you in a funk you don't really feel like doing doing it right. no more you recalibrate it what did you do where did the vision for the sweets come right how did yeah. that come about it was a god thing so really when you're ultimately a creator and when you ultimately follow what passion god gives you realizing he's always going to give you more so it's brand new mercies we talk about that do you just think that he's going to stop pouring on you if you keep going back to him and asking him what it is you need to ask for so I just started all over again, small. And I, and I just, I didn't change the principles because the principles were working. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sore, I'm a giver, I'm a creator, I'm a helper. So the principles didn't change. I just needed to change how I saw things in that moment and rebuild from it. So I just started small again and I got a, a, a small team that I knew believed in me but also believed in themselves and remembered that my ultimate goal was to help people become entrepreneurs. Wow. The ultimate goal for me was to see people bigger than where they were, to, to create a space that they could be the best that they wanted to be and could be. And I, I really, honestly, we started small and I saw this floor. I kept walking up and down the, the floor that I'm on. I have this whole floor now, 2650 East Belt Line. I have the whole second floor and it was occupied the whole floor by a big business in Grand Rapids. And I really, I believe I prayed them out. I said, God, if you, oh, if you let them out of here, I promise I'll do what you showed me without yeah. being afraid and I'll do it. And and they and they end up getting out uh, like they got their their building got we lived on the same floor we had the same floor but their building got start um, getting collapsed rain rain came in their suites and they had to move out and so we're on the same floor sharing the same roof but they got rain done I didn't get rain done they had to get out sooner or later I was walking down and said oh my God this happened for me so I then I then said this is my time to move. And I just walked right into it because I believe fear and faith can't ride in the same car. That Come you on. have to make a decision. You have to say you're either going in fear or you're either going in faith. And once I gathered enough energy to go back and say, I'm going to do this again, I just can't do anything. If I'm right. going to do it, I got to do it to win it. 
Yeah, and it's dope too. I mean, later on, I ask him to post it on his page so he can show the video where he kind of walks through the whole floor. And I love the idea that you created entrepreneur. So the first level of what was called failure was just a bunch of people working on working for you, dependent on you. Right. You were supplying everything. They worked at your salon, and they were coming in there renting a chair, basically. Right. And then you shifted that pattern from now renting a chair to now everybody got their own suite, and every and all the people. That's rocking with you now become their own boss, their own entrepreneur, their own owner. And you just house a building. It's like you're an apostle of beauty shops or something. You just house these buildings. You house these buildings and create these rooms. You created rooms for people to become their own boss and create their own space. So no longer they're working for you. Now they're working from themselves. They just so happen to be in a building that you provided for them. That is dope. And what I wanted it to do, I didn't want it to only be about hair. Yeah, um, that was that was. I think you have to figure out where your niche is and where where you have to. What's gonna be your your bread and butter? Yeah. So I think a lot of times creatives were all over the place, and we don't know how to settle. You got to find where your settling space, your sweet space is, and then kind of grow from there. So I found the sweet space, but then I wanted. I realized that I have a gifting for creatives. Yeah. So that 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 opened up tattoo artists, that opened up makeup artists, that opened up people selling selling extensions, that opened up barbers and beauticians and clothing and retail and make, you know, so it's like so don't limit yourself. If if when as the times change, you have to be progressive enough to change with them. You have to believe that you have to use the mind that God gave you and don't don't box yourself in. If I have boxed myself into just here, I might have 10 suites filled. But when I said, let's grow, let's just do whatever God is saying in this industry, we have about 32 people that can work on my floor now. Yeah, so dope. So, like in my book, I talk about not I talk about not moving forward in the next thing until you create the until you critique the last thing. I talk about in the beginning how God said and he said and he saw and he said and he saw and it was good. So as you start to critique what you're currently working on to make sure it's good, to perfect it, to perfect it more and more and more. So whatever you're building, there's always an opportunity to pivot. There's always an opportunity, sometimes pressure, sometimes a fallout, sometimes a disappointment, sometimes something happens that forces you to pivot and have to critique how you look yeah. at and what you're yeah. doing so you can know what to do and where you're missing money or where you're missing opportunity or where you're missing a perspective. I always say poverty is nothing less than missing a perspective. Poverty is missing a perspective because someone will take the hand that's been dealt with you. They'll take your same situation and right. they'll win with it. How can they win with the same situation you're in? Because they have a perspective. And so poverty is missing a perspective. And so if you want to create, you can't afford to miss perspective. So you got to critique. So in the book, I talk about how God, the ultimate creator, critiqued everything that he made. And he said he saw it was good. He said he saw it was good. And so many times people want to move to the next thing, even after what is an assumed failure. And they want to move to the next thing without critiquing what happened. How did I get here? What could I have done different? And I walked with you through that process. And I, I watched you look at the, the different channels of difference and difficulties, but you did not give up, man. You did not quit. You did not give up. You did not throw in the towel. You chose to get back in there and do it all over again. I love it. You know what was cool? I've always wanted to say this. In my book, <laughs> I also have a chapter in there about you have to, it's almost like CSI. You yeah. got to analyze the crime scene. So right. what, what I say about that, you got to look at the pieces of what didn't go right. Yeah. Um, you know, when you watch CSI and you watch all of those crime scenes, they can always search back to what was the thing that started the spark, where where trace it to see where where this went wrong. And so I, I, I spent a lot of time not so much looking at failure, but looking at the positive things and the negative things and reforming your team. Don't believe that the person that started with you is the person that's got to be with you through the whole thing. 
That's right. Doctors always said that sometimes they're just here for a moment to kind of, they're the helpers. Some people are, you know, they hand off for the rest. Not everybody finishes the whole race with you. So you have to analyze the team and make sure that the people that are you're put together with, are you supposed, are you helping me for my next? Yeah. Are you feeding me? Are you feeding yourself? So I look at the crime scene and figure out what, what are we doing right? How do we mess up? And how do we not end up in this place again? And so I that's love- really important to me. Yeah, I love that. Like when you talk about that, you how important were people in your process? You know, yeah. you mentioned it earlier, but you keep mentioning it again. You know, you are a people person. I am. You enjoy people. Some people don't like people. Some people want to create an isolation. Yeah. They want to create and figure they can do it all by themselves. But how important are people in your process? Both people that are helping you either in it with you or helping you think through it or helping you do it or whatever it is. How important is people in your process? So I listened to the artist last week when he said he likes to create in private. Well, fortunately for mine, I can't. I can't create in private. When you're when you're at a salon and you're doing hair, they you get that instant gratification whether they liked it or wah wah wah. We got to try it. All <laughs> immediately, that happens, right? All that happens immediately. So I'm I'm always that. But you you're never alone. Whether um, whether there's if you just take the out if you don't even go outside of your house, so you have to make sure that your your circle, your nucleus of people are on board. So I had to make sure that my wife was on board. I had to make sure that the vision that I saw that she believed in. If she didn't believe in what we was doing, then it just wasn't gonna happen because. Right. She would always peck away or or throw darts or pick out what she did not feel if it wasn't a vision that we saw together. And then even my children, because I do talk about in the book how everybody sacrificed when you're a business owner. Yeah. They ride the highs and the lows with you. Sometimes you're eating steak and sometimes you're eating peanut butter and jelly. Sometimes you're on a plane flying. Sometimes y'all driving on a trip. So right. everybody sacrificed and for the big reward that we're all looking for. But after your family, your friends, because yeah. relationships, if you're, I believe, I believe in community and tribes. I believe in people doing life together. So they're going to feel it when you feel it. When it's going bad, they're going to feel it. When it's going good, they're going to feel it. So why not invite them on the journey with you and tell them what's going on? Share your dreams. And if we believe in two or three get together, then you got to ask them to pray for something. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm careful how much you give them, but you got to give, you got to trust some people with some stuff to say, I need your prayers. I need your thoughts. And some people, I might need your money. To help you this next buy. We can't ask everybody for money, but in my book, I told y'all I had somebody to give me some money. And that was such a God thing. If I were too afraid to share what I believe God did for me, how can somebody give or open up a window or bless you to help you create if your mouth closed mouth don't get fed? So you have to be able to tell somebody, right? You got you to gotta give them that elevator speech, make them believe in it, convince them that you are credible to sow into. That's what we all we want to do is sow on good ground. That's it, it's that's Bible, but that's non-Bible. You know, people who are looking for business people and businesses to sow into, they just want to make sure that they're, they're this is going to flourish and it's going to have life and legs past what they're giving money to. So I just believe in that circle and I gave it to them, asked them to pray for it, asked them to encourage me. And the last thing I want to say, not last, but added to that is I made time for fun. Yeah. Because this is some, this stuff will take you out. And <laughs> those of us who are entrepreneurs, creatives, we can stay in a bubble, in a shell, and work so hard and just have blinders on. And you're only thinking about what it is you're creating, and life doesn't happen outside. So you got to plan fun into the routine because it's like when you're working real hard, you forget to eat. You know yeah. what I mean? You and forget you know enjoy, you right. eight hours. So you have to sometimes have an alarm set that I got to have something to drink. I got to have lunch. So you got to plan fun and plan it with fun people. And that gives you that time to digress and then get back to what you need to do. So I plan that too. That's good. Listen, so your book, Bounce Back, where can people get it? What is it? Like, so, where, where can they pick it up? I got a copy of my book, Bounce Back, because I'm getting ready. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm getting ready to, to do it on audio. Yeah. But you can go to Experience Jerry, my um, Experience Jerry website, order a book that way. Um, DM me on, um, on um, Instagram. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get this on, um, on uh, as an ebook. Yeah. Yeah. Real soon, ebook, get all of that done. But it's been a great, it's been, I, I was very surprised we sold over a thousand copies. Yeah, it's man. been absolutely great. Um, and I, what I love about my book is you can write in it. So I'm a person that takes notes and scrabbles and scribbles through. So in each of the chapters, I leave you room and I ask you questions because I really want you to think about what is going on in your life. 
I give you questions at the end of each chapter to make you think about what you just read, but not only what you just read, how does this apply to you? Because I'm telling you my story, but what is your story? So yeah. you think about your story, what you're going through, you write some notes down, and I guarantee you when you walk away from this, it's not just a book you read, it becomes a book that helps you and it challenges you for what's the next space and place that you're going to. So when you bounce back, you got the tools and know that we're all going to fail. For yeah. real, we're all going to fail at something, but it's not failure that way because the pastor always says that you fail forward. And I believe in that. I used to be like, fail forward. What does that mean? Fail forward. <laughs> yeah. so, you give me them little words and I just be like, okay, that's catchy. But if, <laughs> I mean, if you fall, you want to yeah. fall forward. It's like when a runner's running and long jump, I see them, they always say fall forward. If you're going to run and do that jump, you better fall forward because they're going to mark you further than right. if you fall backwards. How do you think people, one step closer? How do you think people can can embrace that? Like I love that you say I always say it, and then you think about like what are you talking about? How do you think people can embrace and shake the fear of failure? I feel like that most people are hindered right now in their process because of the fear of failure, because of fear of what people might think, what they say, who's watching, like right. like blowing it in public, you know, risking, taking a right. risk. Like how can you shake, how can you, how can you shake the fear of fear or failure? Because if you don't shake the fear of failure, you never will be able to create. Like how do you think you can do it? So I think one of the easiest things to shake it is to fail. <laughs> exactly. Then you got to start all over. And then you either say I'm going to live in this place. And I I've, I've never I've, I was never supposed to be broke. I, yeah. That's not who I am. No, like no. some people can just be like that. Just some, that just ain't who I am. No, so no. we're always supposed to be. I'm always supposed to be the lender, not the borrower. That's like right. I always am supposed to be at the head of the table. I, oh. It's just who I am. So in if if that happens, then I just have to regroup and say, what am I supposed to do now? And one of the things I think about in my book, I talk about fog. And I think we all get in a foggy place. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever driving in fog and you get scared, just keep driving. You just might have driving. to slow down, to do it. but if you keep, I just say, just right. drive through it. And that's what I say about fear. Just keep walking through fear. Keep driving through fear. Keep talking through fear. And I promise you, the movement, with, like even with exercise and diet, the more you keep moving, you'll be out of it. You'll be yeah. like, oh my God, I'm done. You know, it's like the light as the as the light comes, it brightens up. It will get better, and yeah. you'll realize it was bad, but it didn't break you. Yeah. And you know more about yourself. See, the the bad things that we go through really teach us more about ourselves than the great things. Y'all better bad. write that down. It was bad, but it didn't break it's me. I mean, everybody real. That. that was it. right there. It was bad, but it didn't break me. If it ever got bad for you, but it didn't break you, I want you to make that de declaration right now and yeah. feel your creative energy stir and feel as you hear this testimony, this story of a bounce back, this person that started from the beginning, rise into success, and then had to experience a pitfall, but then came back stronger and better. You ought to declare it and say it. It was bad, but it did not break me. It did not break me. It did not break me. I love that, man. So, so when you think about bouncing back, what do you think stops people from bouncing back? What stops them from bouncing back? Boom, bouncing back. What stopped them from bouncing? I think the back? biggest thing that stops you from bouncing back is the noise of people. It's the chatter of people. So I, I used to hear people say, you got to be careful about the applause that you get because the same applause, they'll clap you up and they'll clap you down. <laughs> <laughs> All the way down, going down, they'll be like, yay. You, know, you really got to be careful with the applause of people and yeah. just know in your heart that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And I can say I had, I'm stronger and better in my, my, my legacy, my foundation, what I've created is stronger now than it ever was then. You know, it was than it ever was then. And and I still have some highs and lows to go for. But one of the things that I also remember, you got to keep your plate. I'm not saying keep your plate full, but you got to keep your you got to keep stuff on your plate because it's almost like I, I let my plate get so low sometimes. Then it's like you got to kickstart yourself. You feel like creators. I do best when I got a lot to deal with. Yeah, I ain't got time to play. It's right. like. You, you got limited time. So it's almost like I can't mess up. Right. I got to do this right the first time. So keep your plate. I'm not saying overflowing, but keep your plate full because God's looking for busy people. When you ain't got nothing going on, you ain't got nothing going on. Yeah, man.
if you're not relevant, you're not relevant, you right. know? So I said, I learned this through this period. Like you always got to be busy doing something. Now, I'm not saying busy just to be busy, but stay busy doing what it is you're supposed to do and let God add things to your plate that make sense. You know, you got to be able to discern that. And don't, don't, it's not about the people. It's about you and him. It's like that up and down thing. And if you got mentors, like I always consult with my pastor. I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. And I'm not saying it because I'm like, because he's on the line. I'm, I'm really not saying that because he's on the line. I usually be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm just telling you, what do you think? And it's not like you got to be careful that you're just not telling people what you're doing. You're not, sh- you got to share ideas and be ready to get information back. Because a lot of times we just say, this is what I'm doing. And you just want to fly and don't want nobody to give you no advice. Don't want them to clip your wings. Don't want them to say, let's think about this. I share and I wait for a response and say, what do you think? If you can't listen to that, then you need to find another mentor, man of God, woman of God, friendship. So I keep it close. I keep those people. If they mean something to you and you want to see, you believe they believe in your best, you got to give that to them and trust and listen to what they say as far as what's going to go on. You know what I mean? That's so good, man. So look, you recreate it, you create it, and he he does do that and has done that all the time. He makes wise and good decisions. But again, I'm honored that he always asks my perspective because poverty is missing a perspective, right? And so he trusts the wisdom of God in my life, and I don't want him to be in that space. So we look at the whole thing, and I'm a challenger to push you to your next. So listen, you recreate it, you recreate your reflections bigger and better than before after a public fallout, got it up and running full string, and then boom, Cabrona hit with a pandemic. Now you in the sense of Corona, but you know, I'm gonna say this to you, even though I'm setting you up for a question, I haven't said this to you, but I can say that I watched you not flinch. I watch you go through Corona and them shutting down the salons, the salons and lines to open up. I watched you not flinch, man. I watched you this time to have, it was almost like your last bounce back built something in you where where it wasn't that you weren't concerned and 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 wasn't looking at how it was going to turn out what was going to happen and 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 i think your biggest <laughs> i think your saddest moments wasn't about the business but because you missed people because you missed yeah. you know you missed the people right. that you connect with because i mean you're a counselor you're a mentor you, you're doing curls but you counseling people you hearing their secrets like they're yeah. getting wisdom from you and and i saw i saw what I saw what hit you the most was the absence of people, but right. you didn't flinch about the business side. So like, what advice do you have for people who actually failed in public, who are supposed to be trying to do the same thing again, not giving up on it, who have to pivot in this moment, who are in the moment, in this moment, and and still pushing through even now with COVID and the pandemic and so much uncertainty. They're entrepreneurs, they're leaders, they're trying to start something, they're shifting from jobs and realizing the the pandemic made them realize what they love and what they don't love, what they want to do and what they don't want to do. What advice do you give people in this moment who who have to now try again, think through it again, recreate again. The governor just came to your business and, Mm -hmm. and the governor came to your business and spent hours with you there and right. now you got a mask on and everybody got a mask on they got their space and six feet social distance and it's like even if you didn't want to do what the law said do then the governor came so you like had to have the whole situation there. and you had to pivot man and i watched you not flinch what do you say to people who have it to pivot right now and create or recreate wherever they are so for real for real if he did it before he'll do it again same guy right now same guy right now like your what you feed into your head is the first thing like yeah. music like when we when we say music is the soundtrack of our life you better right. find a song that's going to be your soundtrack that's right. going to help help drive you through that you know your in your head. <laughs> that's like i put i put a song in my head and believe it but then second of all i was like what are we going to do now? Like, this is a time to do something different. So I'm having a bounce back lunch and learn. I'm having a bounce back lesson. I'm having a get, you know, um, getting people back into their life. One of the things I learned through that is we spend too much money. So I've been, I'm going to teach people how to save. So I tried to figure out how do I recreate other avenues of not just income, but of helping. Because you always say, if you find something, how can you create something, meet a need? And so what I learned through this is that we spend too much money. 
Right. When we weren't able to say, spend money, we were saving money. So I'm now talking to my team about what do we do with our money? What do we do with our resources that we weren't doing? Now you're a financial coach. How do we say, yeah, financial coach now. How do we set ourselves up so if something like this happens again, we're not affected? You know. So I, I flipped it up. I redid my salon. So I was like, let's get in here. When they come back, they need to see that we was working, that I was thinking about them, that I felt like I wanted to give them a creation of what was happening. Hmm. No, I wasn't and what was me, I miss, like you said, I miss my people. But more than that, I needed to feed the people, not just money, but you got, I had to spend my time trying to drive back into them what, what we do, who we are, and that it's all going to come back, come back to us full circle. So I took the time to recreate, not so much destroy the business inside and out, but you got to look at what the business is doing. I took the time to look at all my money. I line item, all that stuff. We didn't check. We didn't. We didn't, a whole lot of stuff we do that we really don't even need. You know right. what I mean? So I cut my budget in and I just and I, I extended that to the people that I work with and told them it's a time to kind of self evaluate what's going on and recreate what it is we need to do and That's come right. back. You know, you got to come back strong. And so, yes, I'm doing, that's why I said bounce back wasn't just for now. We got to bounce back. Bounce back is forever in our life. You know, we're always bouncing back. We're always recreating. We're always going, you know, if it's not snowing, it's raining, it's leaves falling off the tree. <laughs> we got in, in Michigan, there's seasons and there's seasons to our life. So you always got to know that there's a different season, but will you, will you react to the season? Or will you come prepared for the season? And That's I'm true. trying to just always be prepared for the season. I love it. Listen, guys. So listen, what is your soundtrack? What music do you play? What's your soundtrack to life? What's the music you play to get you motivated, remotivated, get you stirred up, get you ready? What song plays in your head when it's time for you to create, when it's time for you to get it in? What's the songs that yeah. you listen to? What's the things that remind you that it's not over? The things that remind you in this season, Jeremiah, what song was playing in your head? What's, what's you your know what's really funny? So I go, I go a lot of places. I have a, <laughs> I got me, I got several playlists. So I have Christian playlists, but I got some, I got some Michael Jackson, some old school stuff. Jerry's an 80 baby. So I go back and forth with some eighties. I, I love the eighties and nineties. I go R and B, but then I go, I, I, I really am. So I'm, I'm like, I am a, I'm a, I'm a Fred lover and I'm a, I'm a Kurt lover. Kurt's words if you just listen to the words that Kirk creates with his music, it always inspires me. And I just always say, for me, I'm like, in my lane, I can do what everyone else is doing. If we learn to dominate, I just want to dominate my lane. Yeah. I want to dominate what God called me to do. I want to leave a footprint, an impression in this industry about who I am, what we've created, what I was supposed to do in my life, and what. And so I'm always striving to do that. And so I just, I just make sure, like for me, I start my day off with praise. Yeah. I start my day off with worship, like straight up. I just worship starts my day. It just is. Right. And so I then I literally I'd be like, God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to say? God, da, da, da. and I'm like, you know, or it, and it's not that deep. I just but I just literally it just opens up. It opens me up to hear and to do and to create. And then the rest goes from there. But anybody knows that starts my day with me and I'm, I'm choosing who starts my day. It's funny. I can I create my schedule. They think they, they can get in when they want to early in the morning. They can't. <laughs> Depends on who you want to do it at the top. Yeah. The morning people, because who starts your day is funny. They they make it. They help you make an impression for the rest of the day. So my my morning from five to seven thirty is kind of blocked. I know who I'm starting with. I need the people that that get it, that understand it, that have a calming spirit, and I and they they go in with me. So I just go start with worship and say, God, you know. Give me what I'm supposed to have. And I'm not, I think the last thing that I would love to say is don't be afraid. For me, I was afraid to, to want things and to believe that, to, to ask God for, for money and to, to, to create wealth. I thought it was, I thought it was wrong, you know, but I, I I'm not scared of that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that me a long time ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
It left me a long time ago. We work real hard and it's not, I just need, I believe in the blessings and I believe for real, I love that pastor does a lot of stuff. I used to be like, man, you all over the, you're all over the, before he said we all over the world, I was like, you are all over the world. But I realized that this is like the gospel has to be all over the world. And I, I, I and he always taught us that we all have a, we all have a stage. Um, we all have a stage. You just have to figure out where your platform is and work it. And That's so right. I, I just work it for where I'm at and whatever God has for me, I'll do it, you know, and That's I, right. be it a book, be it a, a podcast, be it decorating, be it counseling, whatever it is, just be where you're supposed to be and he going to unlock the rest. So good, man. Listen, you are a joy, man. People are inspired and blessed by you. Everybody that gets to know you or gets to spend time with you always feels your love, your warmth, and your energy. I just wanted my Create Everything audience to get to meet yeah. you. You're incomparable and incredible. And man, like I always tell you, this whole journey of ministry would have been so much harder uh, without you involved. You and my wife have been friends uh, so long. Yeah. I'm so glad she introduced me to you for 30 years. That's incredible. I'm so glad she introduced me to you. Uh, when I was in a space where I was like, I didn't want to know nobody else, but she said, you got to meet Jeremiah. And I'm so glad that I met Jeremiah because Jeremiah adds value to every situation. Listen, get his book, Bounce Back. I know we talking about my book and create everything, but listen, I told y'all the second half of my life, I want to create a platform for other people. I'm going to be all right. I just want to make sure other people are good. I happened to forward this book and that was an honor to do so, but you got to get this book bounce back. Find him on social media, follow him and connect to what he's doing. He's a lot of fun. So Jeremiah is 50. You're the halfway point. Today's your birthday. Today right. is your birthday, man. What's next for you on, on this birthday? What, what's next for you? Like, what do you feel like right now? What have you been thinking about? Like, what's a goal you want to reach? Something you want to do uh, right now in this space in your life? And I know there's plenty of things, but right. you know, I always say when your past is, is, is outweighs your future, then the end is near. So I know you're still dreaming about the future. So what's up? What's up with the future? What's next for you in the future? So, um, it's interesting because I've been thinking about what's the next. Um, I think for me, um, I'm still really trying to figure it out. Um, it's it's funny how I've heard I heard a person say they had to dream again because a lot of what they want to happen happened. And I, I can say I, I I thought that was kind of strange. Yeah. But the older you get, you realize you start checking off stuff on your list that you want to do. Um, I, I said to my wife, I need to be consistent with myself as much as I am with people. Yeah. So I need to make sure that I find space for me yeah. um, in, in the things. And, and, I, and it's so funny that we think that I, that it's like the simple things, like I'll give up something that I wanted to do for somebody else. So I really want to be consistent with me, with, with my workout, with my eating, with my health, because I want to be around for my children and for whatever else that I need to do. But also, I, I had so much fun creating videos. I think um, that space of creating videos and giving people life lessons through laughter, but also just making people just stop and think, hmm. So one of my goals next is to make sure that um, I continue to make myself um, present um, on, in video, in the video world, but also I, I love to um, I love to teach. So I love to get people in small groups and encourage them and make them and pull out the best of them and make them realize that if it happened to me, it can happen to you. Because a lot of times people just, especially black people, we just don't believe that it can happen to us. We believe that um, or, it's, it's hard to see <laughs> that, it, that, 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 it's, it, that it just happens. And so I just want to re-encourage people to know that if you stay focused and you stay faithful, that everything you're looking for, it can happen to you. But you, you're the, we're the, we get in our way the most. We yeah. really, we get in our, we're, we're, sometimes we can be our, our own worst enemy. So getting people in groups and, and doing what, what that does. And then, you know, working with JG, making sure everything <laughs> on that end is good. We gonna make this thing happen. I appreciate it, man. You always help me get it in. Listen, yeah. everybody, did you enjoy Jeremiah today on his birthday? He spent a little time with us on his 50th birthday. I know at the end, I usually ask you if you enjoy this to, to support with a cash app. He didn't know I was going to do this, but it's about 100 of Ooh. us here on here. I want everybody to send Jeremiah a cash app. Do the best you can. Jeremiah, what's your cash app, man? Come on. What is it? What's your cash app? 
What dollar is- sign JW uh, 5001. Dollar sign J W five zero one. All right, let's hit it for him. My wife hit it right there. Dollar <laughs> sign J W five zero zero one. Jeremiah is a giver. That's why he could he stuttered when I said give his cash out because he ain't he don't do that. I want y'all to hit him up. Give him five. Yeah. Give him ten. It's about a hundred of us on here. If we bless him, if he bless you tonight, just hit him up. Let him have a good birthday. Everybody said, yeah, you bless me. Yeah, you bless me. Yeah, I'm stimulated. Listen, you can begin again, whoever you are, wherever you are, you can begin again. Jeremiah bounced back. I bounced back. Everybody on this timeline bounced back from something. It's a part of your life. It's how you create everything. I told you in the book, you critique after you create, you critique. After you create, you critique. And when you create, you critique. That's how you bounce back. All right. So we want you to get it in. Enjoy your summer. This is the summer to create. We are in July. We are moving forward. This is the summer to create. If you enjoy Jeremiah, real talk, right? Put your money where your where your where your enjoyment is. Just hit them with a 10, hit them with a 20, hit them with a five. Do the very best you can. But do me a favor and bless him on his birthday. He fit it, y'all. Halfway point and doing it good so much, man. Interior designer, helping people dreams come true. We come to houses and decorate, help me decorate the revolution, help me create culture. We call him the concierge at the revolution. He's just warm. He's friendly. Go out of his way, the heart of a server. And listen, he adds value to every space. You got to meet him today. Look him up at Experience Jerry on Instagram, or you can check him out on Facebook. Reflections Salon and Suites. See what's happening. He'll post a video tomorrow. Uh, he's taking a break today because everybody hitting him up for his birthday. But he'll post a video maybe tomorrow just about the suite so you can see how to start something from nothing. It's going to happen for you, right? I want everybody to say that real quick for me. It's going to happen for me. Come on, everybody say, it's going to happen for me. Write that down. Type it. It's going to happen for me. I only bring people on to inspire you so you can see what happens for them. God is no respect of per- person. He is a respect of purpose. So if you connect to the purpose, it will happen for you. Somebody will lock in and fund your dream. You will begin again. You can start over and be bigger and better. Come on, say it. It's going to happen for for me. It's going to happen for me. I'm going to downsize to resize to upsize. It's going to happen for me. I'm going to recreate, regenerate, re-understand where I am. It's going to happen for me. I'm not going to go under. I'm coming up out of this, through this. It's going to happen for me. Everybody make that declaration. You start right where you are. You begin again. It's going to happen for me. 25 years in the business and he's still thriving, still dreaming. Come on, say it. It's going to happen for me. You might be 25 weeks. You might be 25 months. You might be more than 25 years in a business. You might be pivoting and recreating your business. But I want you to understand that God is no respected person and it's going to happen for me. You're going to create everything. As long as you keep showing up, we're going to keep provoking you. I want everybody to hit that dollar sign, JW5001. Dollar sign, JW5001. Jeremiah, thanks for rocking with us tonight, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Listen, everybody, make sure that you connect, all right? We keep him building, keep him bo- keeping it moving. Get the book. Understand that you can get his book. Uh, you can get Get his book that is called Bounce Back. Make sure that you get Create Everything. And we're going to keep dreaming. We're going to keep building. And we're going to keep getting it in. It's going to happen for me. 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 What is Jerry's info? It's right there. Follow him on Instagram. Check him out. Jeremiah White, it's going to happen 
for me. It's been summer madness today. We rocked it in the background. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We're going to create everything. This is the summer of dreams. This is the summer of dreams. We're going to create everything. And I can't wait to see it continue to unfold. Make sure that you come back next Tuesday. Remember, bring a guest. You never know what's going to happen on a visual podcast called Create Everything. Failure is not final. If you came in late, (laughs) you want to catch the nuggets that we dropped at the beginning. All right. Failure is not final. It's just a matter of opinion. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Remember, it's going to happen for me. Hit that cash app for JW5001. It's his birthday. Ain't that something? 5001. (laughs) JW5001. I love y'all. Thanks for rocking with me today. Create everything, the visual podcast. It's been real, and I hope that you have some summer madness. This is summer to create. We rocking it out. We're cooling the game, and let's ride it out. All right. Enjoy, create, be inspired. Love y'all. Thank you. Peace.